to This Week on 33rd Street. Joining me today is uh, Colin Paul Henderson and Ian Lamar Wenick. I'm Holden McGinnis, um, and we're here to talk to you about uh, Penn football. So uh, last weekend, Penn came up with definitely their most complete game of the season, the 31-7 win against Columbia. Colin, can you walk me through the win and sort of what it means for Penn's future? Yeah, definitely. So um, last week, Penn uh, notched its first victory uh, of the year against um, Columbia. Penn had come in was going into the game with an eight-game losing streak, but Columbia was going in with a 15-game losing streak, so you can take it with a grain of salt. Um, they did put together a pretty complete performance. Torgerson was pretty solid. Um, he did what he had to do, limited the mistakes. But where um, on the offensive side of the ball, where Penn really uh, got the job done was on the ground. Um, they were a little depleted at running back, to say the least, but... They got um, Eric, uh, Eric Fiore and Brian Shanauer to really step up, and they ended up uh, putting up close to 250 yards on the ground, so that was key, while limiting Columbia to only 20 overall rushing yards, so the defensive front really stepped up big time. Um, they, Penn still did have a question in the secondary. They didn't, weren't nearly as effective at stopping the Lions through the air, and that will be um, a big problem moving yeah. forward, especially against Yale, who features a highly dynamic passing uh, team. As you said, Colin, Columbia definitely the most complete game for uh, for Penn. And looking forward to Yale, Yale's got a pretty dynamic offense led by uh, Morgan Roberts and Tyler Varga. It'll be really interesting to see what this uh, this Penn defense can do against them. Uh, Ian, who's uh, right in our preview this week, uh, can you walk me through what we should be looking forward to against Yale this weekend? So when I was learning today at practice, I was talking to Coach uh, Bagnoli and defensive coordinator Ray Priori is that the Quakers aren't looking to fall into one kind of specific defensive formation to go against Yale's offense, which is really multifaceted. You have Tyler Varga, who's a bruising power runner. He falls forward, he knocks guys over, and you have a really efficient quarterback in Morgan Roberts, who's hitting on 69% of his passes, and you have a game-changing receiver in Deion Randall. So you can't really stack the box against Varga every play, or else you're going to have a lot of dig routes, a lot of quick hitches, a lot of high percentage throws from Roberts that will carve you up and move that ball down the field in 8 to 10 yard increments. The key for Penn this weekend is going to be disguising blitz packages, changing formations, and trying to confuse Roberts at the line and try to get Yale out of its offensive rhythm. This is a real big game for Penn. And uh, looking forward to this game, we're going to we're gonna go through our predictions. Let's start off with Colin. What do you think is going to happen this weekend? Yeah, um, I kind of touched on it earlier, but the Penn secondary, we went into the season thinking it was going to be a strength. It clearly has not been a strength uh, for Penn, so I, I think they're going to get I think they're going to get gashed in in the through the air. So I think um, Yale's going to take this thirty five to ten. And uh, for me, honestly, the win against Columbia not enough to convince me much otherwise. I mean, Columbia not not the kind of team that a thirty one seven win, however great it looked, really means that much. And uh, Yale's been playing incredibly well this season, particularly on offense, putting up like forty five points a game. And with that win against Army. Um, for me, I, I think the Yale offense is just going to be too much for Penn to handle. I'm going to take uh, Yale 42, Penn 24. And I think Penn's secondary is a little bit better than advertised and better than what I thought when I wrote the column that basically called them out after that 60-point debacle against Fordham. But I don't think they're going to show enough to truly shut down Yale. No team really has. I'm going to say Yale 40, Penn 20. All right. So for uh, Colin Paul Henderson and Ian Lamar Winnick, I'm Holden McInnes. This has been This Week on 33rd Street. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week.